Story continued from Utah Repta Playlist. The wet season has ended, but the lands of the Blades Pack still remain lush for now. The individual Blades members have spread out to patrol and mark their territory. Walking the southern border is Strider, but he is not alone. He is joined by Falcon, the female he had drawn the eye of a few days ago. They weren't a bonded pair yet, as the two were only now actually spending time with each other. But Falcon was willing to allow Strider, who was a far lower ranking member than herself, to escort her on patrol. An important step, and so far neither of them had shown any interest in any of the other Utah Raptor members. Patrolling such a wide stretch of land is time consuming, so throughout the journey, Strider has been distracting Falcon, trying to keep her attention. Everything from flapping his feathered arms, to jumping on the spot, and running circles around her. It is a form of play, something he hasn't partaken in for a very long time. Falcon is amused by Strider's antics, but always keeps her mind on the task, happy to simply be spending time with the suddenly energetic male. The two are so distracted, both nearly jump in fright when the sound of rustling leaves breaks the silence. The two dromaeosaurs quickly regain their composure, and zero in on the noise. Bearing their claws, they walk through the thick foliage. Coming through the other side, they don't see anything, or hear anything. But their sense of smell tells them that some small dinosaurs were just here, and likely fled when they detected the Utah Raptor. It seemed that both species got a fright. Falcon moves to go back the way she came, when Strider noticed something out of the corner of his eye. He turns his head, looks up into a small tree, and sees one of the small dinosaurs that ran away, though in a different direction. Clinging to a flimsy branch is a frightened Ned Colbertia, a three meter long ornithomimosaur covered in feathers. The little omnivore evidently thought that crawling up the tree to escape the predators was better than running like the rest of his group. Now with the six meter carnivore staring up at him, it didn't seem so wise. Strider clicked to get Falcon's attention, and then gestured to the out of place Ned Colbertia, not far above their heads. The omnivore held the branch it was perched on tightly, now wishing she had crawled up a taller, or more robust tree. Standing directly under the Ned Colbertia, Strider and Falcon took turns jumping up at the smaller dinosaur, trying to snatch it up between their powerful jaws. But no matter how many times they jumped, they were each about half a meter short, which actually calmed the Ned Colbertia a fraction. That was until Strider pressed his upper body against the base of the tree, and ever so slightly, made the thin tree bend, lowering the Ned Colbertia towards Falcon. The female Utah Raptor waited and watched as her next meal began to panic, clutching the branch tighter and digging its claws into the bark. Strider could only push the tree so far, and when it seemed he had reached his limit, Falcon leapt upwards, baring her teeth. Her jaws snapped shut, only a few centimeters below the terrified Ned Colbertia, just missing. But she overdid her jump, so instead of landing on her feet, she instead crashed gracelessly amongst the underbrush. Falcon shook herself off, and before she knew it, Strider was by her side, checking to see if she was okay. The female Dromiosaur pushed the smaller male away. She wasn't a frail heiress. It would take more than a small fall to hurt her. Strider backed up feeling rather embarrassed, and then looked up to see the Ned Colbertia swaying in the tree as it shook back and forth. But the little dinosaur held on tight. She wasn't going anywhere. Having wasted enough time, the pair went back to their patrol, eager to finish up as soon as possible. The Ned Colbertia, however, stayed put for some time, in no rush to leave the safety of the tree. Story continued after the facts section of the video. Hello fellow travelers and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down one of the rarely found small dinosaurs from the Sedair Mountain Formation, Ned Colbertia. Three skeletons have been attributed to Ned Colbertia, which were discovered in 1993 in the Yellow Cat member 
of the Sadare Mountain Formation of Utah. It was originally named in 1995 as Ned Colbertia Whitley, but in 1998 its species name was changed to Justin Hoffmani. The genus name honors paleontologist Edward Howard Colbert. The species name is a unique one, as it is after Justin Hoffman, a at the time six-year-old schoolboy from Newton, New Jersey, who had participated in a contest for children by Discovery Card. The winner of the contest getting their name put into an official dinosaur species name. The three specimens were all partial skeletons, all lacking skulls, all were heavily eroded, and all were juveniles. The holotype, that being CEUM5071, was about 1.5 meters in length, though it's thought that adults could grow up to 3 meters long and stood about 50 centimeters at the hip. Due to the limited remains and their poor condition, not a lot about this genus is known, but a few interesting details were noted. The thumb claw was much larger than the second claw of the hand. The pubic bone carried a large foot, with a very small or absent anterior process, but a large posterior process. The thigh bone had a lesser trochanter, that was clearly lower than the greater trochanter, and the fourth trochanter was very well developed and the enlarged second claw on the foot was lacking. Because of this, Ned Colberti was thought to have been a Silurosaurian. There was even a full paper published on whether it might be an Elaphrosaur, which it isn't. However, a study in 2016 found it to be an Ornithomimosaur, as it had a few features similar to the basal species Harpy Mimus. Overall, it's good to simply find and name new species, especially when you can narrow down which family they belong to, as it helps give a better idea of what was living in each environment, as well as help to track the evolution of different families, and how they spread out and changed over time. Of course, people can always assume that families like, say, the Ornithomimids in this case, are in a location, as absence of evidence doesn't mean evidence of absence but always good to confirm with real fossils. Unfortunately, this is really all we have on Ned Colbertia, but that seems to be a theme of animals from the Sedare Mountain Formation. There's not a huge amount of data on any of them. But what do you think of Ned Colbertia? And for my question of the week, what specific formation is unusual for lacking certain groups of animals? What lesser known dinosaur would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, please enjoy the rest of the narrative section. Strider and Falcon were nearing the end of the area they were set to patrol, which took them right to the border of the Red Claw Pack. Falcon gazed over the area with indifference, but Strider took a long look at his territory of birth, wondering what had become of his previous family. Soon after, the scent hit him, a shockingly familiar scent, but one that had the unmistakable mark of death. Without thinking, he began to move forward, but Falcon's call snapped him out of it. She was in shock that he would even think about entering another pack's territory, a concept mostly foreign to female Utahraptor, as they stay in one family group their entire lives. Strider looked at her, and then back to where the scent was coming from. He had to confirm what it was, just like last time. It took some convincing, but eventually he got Falcon to come with him, making her see it as a test of courage and an opportunity to spy on a neighboring clan. Falcon took a deep breath and for the first time in her life, stepped over her territory's border. Slowly and stealthily, the two moved through the foliage, following the scent Strider had picked up, knowing full well that if they got caught, they would be killed. It was eerily silent. Every brush of leaves or random sound made by various animals put the duo on edge, but steadily they were coming up to the source of the scent. Strider pushed his head through some shrubs, and before him was a massacre. Three Utah Raptor lay dead, their injuries clearly having been inflicted by fellow Utah Raptor. Strider looked over the former members of his clan, but one stood out more than the others. In the center of the blood-soaked clearing was his former leader, Redclaw. 
Her body had countless injuries from bites, slashes, punctures, torn feathers. Both her arms were broken, as was her neck, which was likely the finishing blow. Staring down at the figure that had raised him, pushed him, and taught him so much, Strider began to piece everything together. It looked like the other two dead Utahraptor, both females, had tried to usurp Redclaw, and in the fight, they had all killed each other. The death of the previous alpha male, One-Eye, must have been the catalyst for the other females to try and seize Redclaw's position from her, and they had paid for it with their lives, and also destroyed the clan's leadership in the process. But there was another smell here, the blood of a four female, that wasn't here. It seemed she had survived, and now would be the new ruler of Strider's old pack. Strider knew one thing for certain, it wasn't his sister, Swifttail, who did this, but now he was greatly concerned for her safety. Would she be bold or foolish enough to challenge the new Alpha? Could the pack even hold itself together after losing three high-ranking females? Strider once again found himself with so many questions and no answers. Then again, it wasn't his concern. This was no longer his home. He had a new home, a new family, and he had just gotten Falkian's approval. He would not risk it for this. Falkian turned to him, but before she could voice her concerns, Strider indicated that it was time to go, which was exactly what she wanted. With a quickened pace, they moved back towards their territory, leaving the killing ground behind them. Strider was unsure he regretted returning to his old territory again, or if he should tell Blackback and Roughguts of what he saw. He had told them about One Eye. No, he had to put this behind him, not just for his sake, but for his brothers. He had to leave other packs' social upheavals to themselves, and concentrate on the life he would make for his new family.